Last week, the Oculus Link was rolling out of beta, making it possible for Quest users to plug their headset to a computer and have access to any VR PC content. But for us VR developers, the Oculus Link comes with another great feature. We can now directly test our game with the Oculus Quest. No more waiting to build and export our app to design our game. Just a press of a button and our game is now ready to be tested. And today we'll see how much these features improve our workflow because I'm challenging myself to recreate Pistol Whip in only 13 minutes. And if you don't know what Pistol Whip is, this is for you. Pretty epic, right? Okay, so grab a drink, get comfy on your chair because we are getting started. I started out by recreating the look of the game. As our player moved in a straight line, we needed a big corridor, so I made a cube with Pro Builder and inverse his face. Next, I needed to add some hiding place for our enemies, so I created a new poly shape, and by clicking around, I was able to make some hiding spot for our enemy. Then, I made a mirror copy of the shape first on the X axis, then on the Z axis to place it around our scene. For the look of our game, in Pistol Whip, the environment style is all always around one particular color with the opposite color in a fog. To replicate this in our game, I changed the environment lighting to a blue gradient and increased the fog and set it to a red color. And just like that, we had our environment finished. Luckily, the default texture of Pro Builder matched pretty nicely the checkerboard texture of a Pistol Whip. To recreate the gun mechanic, I used this free Desert Eagle 3D model from Knockabot, which has a nice animation and that triggers a script to shoot a bullet. Now all I needed to do was take the gun, drag it under the right end of the player and scale it down to match the size of a real gun. And to get the correct size according to the end of the player, I've used a 3D model of a Quest controller from the Oculus package. And just like that, we add a gun in our hand. Now let's make it fire. So in the real game, it's actually not a bullet that shot from the gun, but a white line. To do this, I modified the initial script given with the gun. First, I changed the input to trigger the shooting with the right index trigger of the Oculus Quest controller. Then when the player is shooting, it will shoot a ray that will tell me if we hit something. And then I instantiate a line and set its position to go from the barrel of the gun to the point we hit. In Pistol Whip, we have a limited number of ammo that are always shown on our gun. When the player has no more ammo, he can reload by rotating the gun down. To replicate this mechanic, I created two variables, one to tell me the maximum number of ammo and the other one for the current number of ammo that we have. Then I created the reload function which reset the current ammo and use this function whenever the player bent his gun down. In the meantime, I added the three sounds. With these three sounds, I trigger them in my script when the player reloads, add no ammo, and when he fires a bullet. Finally, to show how many bullets the player had left, I created a text that I reposition in front of the gun and set the text to display the number of bullets in my script. And just like that, we had our gun working. So anyway, I started blasting. And last but not least, the player needs to move automatically like in the real game. So I quickly created a new script with only one line of code to move the player in the same direction. Okay, so at that particular moment, I saw that already half the time had already passed and we still had all the enemy behavior to do. So without losing more time, I dragged in my scene this 3D model that I found in Mixemo, which was scary enough to be our enemy. Then to replicate the look of Pistol Whip, I changed its color to black. Okay, now that we had our enemy, I needed him to shoot. To do this, I started by putting on one after the other two animations that I also found on Mixemo. One for the character to stand and one for him to shoot. And now our enemy is starting to look threatening. For the actual shooting, I decided to use the same gun I did for the player to save a little time. So first, I did a copy of the gun, froze the moment in the animation where I wanted the enemy to shoot, positioned the gun under the end of the enemy, and finally dragged the gun as a child of the enemy's end. And as a result, I had the gun now following the animation. Nice! 
for the look of our bullet, I've decided to do the opposite as we did for the player, which is not using a line but a real bullet, and to improve the look of it, I've made a red trail. So now the bullet will always show us where it moves. So the next thing I needed to do was making the enemy always look at us, otherwise this would happen. Now at this state of the game, our enemy had a big issue, as you can see here if the player is the red sphere, when the enemy shoot, with the time to reach its target, the bullet will always miss the player, so to fix this, I made a little bit of math to calculate the wanted position of the bullet and the player which gave me an equation, giving me the needed speed of the bullet according to the position of the enemy, the position of the player, the speed of the player and finally the time I want to pass before the bullet meets the player, and this is the result with this speed implemented. Now that our enemy could shoot, we needed him to get shot at, so I decided to create a ragdoll by going here on 3D, create ragdoll and dragging the bones of our enemy to the ragdoll slot. Then I created a function called dead to disable first the animation, then activate our ragdoll and finally add a force where the enemy was shot at. And just like that, we made our enemy dies. And that was it for the creation of our enemy. Now all I needed to do was made a lot of copy of it and place it around my scene. Then I needed to add a delay between the activation of the enemy. To sequence our enemy, I created a timeline where I first dragged an epic dubstep music in the style of Pistol Whip. After that, I drag all my enemies in the timeline, press play and now sequence them when I wanted the enemy to be activated according to the rhythm of the music. With only 1 minute left on the clock, I remember that I forgot to make a game over when the enemy bullet touched our face, so I quickly created a sphere collider that will trigger a function to reload the scene when we are hit with a bullet. And here is the final result. And here you have it, a VR game made in 13 minutes and 15 seconds. Well, we did exceed the 13 minutes mark, but let's blame it on the time it took the script to compile. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think we did a great job at recreating the spirit of the game. As always, if you want more VR content like this one, leave a like and subscribe to this channel to not miss the next video. And for the one who wants to know more, the complete 30 minutes unedited footage of the challenge is available on my Patreon, which I will put the link below.